Hi, this video is a sort of prequel to the IV Swinger demo video. It's for people who somehow found the demo video but don't have the background to understand it all. The overall purpose of the video is to explain why I built the IV Swinger and why it's useful. To accomplish that, I will explain what an IV curve is, describe what an IV curve for a solar panel looks like and what you can learn from it, describe how to trace an IV curve from a solar panel manually, answer the question, why automate it? And finally, answer the question, why not just buy a commercial IV curve tracer? So the assumptions about you are that you know little or nothing about what an IV curve is or what it tells us about a photovoltaic solar panel, that you have had high school physics or at least have a basic understanding of what electric voltage, current, and resistance are. So just to review, uh, Ohm's law tells us that voltage equals current times resistance. So current is I, resistance is R, voltage is V. The unit of volt, uh, voltage is the volt. Then we can rearrange that and express it as I current equals voltage divided by resistance. The unit of current is the amper or amp. And then finally, resistance equals voltage divided by current. And the unit of resistance is the ohm. Then we have power. Power is very important to us. It's, the, it's energy per time. So the fact that a solar panel converts energy from the sun to electrical energy is great, but um, without knowing how much time it takes to give us a given amount of energy, we don't know really how useful it is. And power tells us that. And that's why most people are more familiar with the standard unit of power, which is the watt, than they are with the standard unit of energy, which is the joule. Um, so electric power is calculated by multiplying voltage by current, so P equals V times I. And then you can also express that in a couple different ways by making substitutions from the equations above the Ohm's law equation. So power is also equal to I squared times R, current squared times R, or voltage squared divided by R. And this is a table I, or a chart that I found on the web that expresses power, current, voltage, and resistance in terms of the other, and that can be others, and that can be kind of useful. So what's an IV plane? Um, the vertical axis is current, the horizontal axis is voltage, and it's used to represent the relationship between current and voltage for some device, like a resistor, a diode, power supply, or solar panel. So you can pick any point on this plane and you know four things about it. You know the current from how high it is, the voltage from how far to the right it is, resistance because that's V divided by I, and power because that's V times I. So next few slides, I'm going to give some of these examples. So the first one is this point on the vertical axis. And so the current is 3 amps. Voltage is 0 volts. Resistance, remember, is V divided by I, so that's going to be 0 ohms. And the power is V times I, so that's going to be 0 watts. And sort of its counterpart is this point down here on the horizontal axis. So in this case, the current is 0 amps, voltage is 3 volts, resistance is V divided by I, so that's 3 divided by 0. We know we can't divide by 0, but basically if you could, it, that basically is infinity, so this is a resi uh, an infinite resistance. And then again, power is V times I, 3 times 0 is 0, so this is also 0 power. Next point is up here. Uh, Current is 3 amps, voltage is 3 volts, then resistance, number is V divided by I, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so 1 ohm, power V times I, 3 times 3 is 9 watts. So some observations about the IV plane. So in terms of resistance, points on the vertical axis, the I axis, are short circuits. So that's what we call it when the resistance is zero, directly connected, no resistance. Uh, points near the vertical axis are low resistance. And then points on the horizontal, the v-axis, are open circuits, which is what we call an infinite resistance, basically not connected at all. And then points that are near the horizontal axis, uh, the v-axis, are high resistance. So here's what that looks like on the, the graph. So we've got <laughs> this area up here, which is low resistance, and actually before that we have the, the zero resistance on the vertical axis. Then in the middle here we have what I call sort of medium resistance. And then down here we have high resistance. 
and then actually on the voltage axis the resistance is infinite and these different points here just calculated what the resistance of those are so uh, zero ohms one third ohm two thirds ohm one ohm 1.5 ohms three ohms and then again infinite so some more observations uh, is that if you actually want to plot all the points that are at a particular resistance so in other words a constant resistance plot you'll get these straight lines starting at the origin and and going somewhere so straight if it's zero ohms, it's a line that goes straight up from the the origin. If it's uh, infinite resistance, that's a horizontal line, so straight, flat, horizontal from the starting at the origin. Small resistances are steep lines. One ohm resistance is a 45 degree line, and then uh, larger resistances are flat lines. So, not sure. I said what the bullet says, but resistance is the re is V over I, so that's actually the reciprocal of the slope, because slope is rise over run, <coughs> which would be I over V, so this is V over I, so that's the, the reciprocal of that. So here's a drawing that just shows that. So, <coughs> so here <coughs> we've got this vertical line, that's where you've got zero resistance, down here you've got the infinite resistance line, and in between this is a one-third ohm resistance, two-thirds ohm resistance, one, 1 1.5, two, three, six. And one thing to notice about this actually is that even though this seems like they're pretty well evenly spaced, uh, the resistances actually are not uniform. So it goes, we go up by a third of an ohm to get here, another third of an ohm to get here, another third of an ohm to get here, but now we're going up by half to get here, half to get here, a full ohm to get here, and three ohms to get here, and then infinity minus six ohms to get only this rest of the way down here. So now some observations about uh, power on this plane. So <laughs> power is V times I, so that actually is the area of a rectangle where the point that you're looking at trying to figure out the power is in the upper right corner. Uh, it happens to be a sort of useful way to, to sort of visualize what the power is. So points on either axis are zero power, Points near either axis are low, low power, and points far away from both axes are high power. So here's a little sort of animation that shows what that is. This is a point that again is on the vertical axis at zero power. This is basically a rectangle that's uh, just a line because it has zero area. This point has power of three watts, and it's sort of a smaller rectangle, slightly bigger rectangle, six watts. 9 watts, oh, back to 6 watts, 3 watts, back to 0. So now we're going to get to what an IV curve is. We've discussed what the IV plane is. <laughs> the IV curve is something that you draw on the IV plane, and it's a set of points on the IV plane that describes the relationship between current and voltage for a particular device. So. Um, for a DC power supply, <laughs> which is what we're kind of interested in, is the set of points that describes the power delivered to all possible resistances, or also known as loads. So the curve depends on the type of DC power supply. And so a battery is a DC power supply. A bench power supply is a DC power supply. Uh, and what we're really interested in is the photovoltaic solar panel. Um, and so not only depends on the, the curve, depends on the type, but it also depends on conditions. So for battery, that could be the rated voltage of the battery, the internal resistance of the battery, its state of charge, temperature, and other things. Uh, for a bench power supply, uh, depend on the knob settings, internal resistance. I'm actually going to show you some example with the bench power supply. And then for a photovoltaic solar panel, uh, the size of the panel, how many cells it has, how much sun is hitting it, how much shade is hitting it, um, the temperature of the panel, and some other things will determine what that actual curve looks like. Okay, so I want to actually show you <laughs> um, a bench power supply because it actually is possibly a little easier to understand at first than a solar panel, and a solar panel is actually very analogous to it. So this is what one looks like. And so it has two pairs of knobs, current knobs and voltage knobs. And if you set the current 
So I'll show you that again. So the, the current <laughs> knobs are here. There's just a fine and a coarse, so it's really effectively one knob. And then um, the voltage knobs are, are here next to it. And <clears throat> they also have a fine and a coarse. So if you set the current knob to three amps, it basically is trying to give you <clears throat> three amps of current regardless of what the load is, but uh, it can't, it, it, and it will never give you more than three amps because uh, <clears throat> that's what, what it's set to. And so then if you set the voltage, and if you set the voltage knob to three volts, it tries to give you three volts of voltage regardless of the load, but it will never give you more than three volts. So what that means is that for low resistance loads, less than an ohm, it's gonna, succeed at giving you the three amps of current, but it cannot deliver you the three volts of voltage since that would produce a current greater than three amps and you set the knob, the current knob to three amps. High resistance loads, it's the opposite of that. It succeeds at giving you the three volts, but it can't give you three amps because uh, that would give you a voltage greater than three volts and that's its max. So another way to say this is for loads below an ohm. Uh, when it's set to three, three amps and three volts, it's a constant three amp current source and for loads greater than one ohm, it's a constant three volt voltage source. So I can kind of show you what that looks like. So here's it turned on with the, the leads not connected to anything. And we've got the voltage <coughs> saying that it's three volts. And that's the, basically an open circuit voltage. Then connected the two alligator clips directly to each other um, right here. And uh, now you can see the currents at three amps and the voltage would be at zero volts except for there's actually a little bit of resistance of the the wires themselves so it's it shows you 0.1 volts um, so now i've added a small resistance um, and so you can see the voltage has gone up to 1.2 but current is still 3.0 a little bit more resistance voltage is at 1.8 a little more resistance voltage is at 2.9 so right now we're almost at the maximum, uh, almost at three volts, which is what it's set to. Now it switches and we've got three volts, but the current's gone down to 2.5 amps. Now a little bit more resistance and the current's gone down to 1.1 amps, then 0.4, then one. So I'm gonna go backwards and show you that over again. And another thing to notice is, <laughs> This little LED here, so that actually is marked CC, which stands for constant current. So the the, current, the voltage, uh, the power supply itself, uh, sort of knows it has two modes. It's got the mode where it's de delivering constant current, and it's got the mode here where it's delivering constant voltage. And so, boop, 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 and there you can see it switched from constant current to constant voltage. So, therefore, the curve, <laughs> if we actually plotted those points out is a rectangle with the top at three amps and the right side at three volts. So here's a drawing of that. So that's what the power supply is actually <coughs> attempting to do um, and what its IV curve looks like. So the only catch is that's ideal um, real road power supply. You actually have a little bit of what you call a knee in the upper right. Uh, this is an exaggeration, but it sort of bends rather than goes to a sharp corner. And there's something called fill factor, which would be the ratio of the, the actual power, <coughs> um, which is the red square to the ideal max power, which is the green square. Okay, now we can finally talk about the IV curve of a solar panel. But I'm out of time on part one of the video, so we'll pick up here on part two.